Hello and welcome back to another update where I cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. It is your host Weep Union and in this one we have several advances by the Russians along the Kurahove and Pokrovsk section of the front line. There's some Russian advances in the Kupiansk direction and the Ukrainians recaptured some territory in the Turetsk direction. Starting out in the south, the Russians are fighting in the direction of Shakhtarsk. Some reports that the Russians have gained full control of it, but it so far remains in the grey zone as the Russians are fighting over the fortified positions north and west of the settlement. To the east of it, in the direction of Novokrenka, the Russians have captured the half of the southern part of the settlement. Again, there are several fortified positions of the Ukrainians north and northwest of Novokrenka. This means that the Russian forces are fighting over the settlement itself so far, gaining a foothold and trying to gain a crossing over the river that goes through the central parts of the settlement into the northern parts to start fighting over the fortified positions, gaining control over those would lead to control over the settlement. In the eastern direction by Boyevlenka, the Russians have expanded westwards in the direction of the fortified positions of the Ukrainians along the road between Novokrenka and Boyevlenka, capturing the final parts of the farm area and reaching into the road in the northern outskirts of Boyevlenka, where fighting is taking place over the remaining parts of the settlement. Again, there's a lot of fortified positions near the settlement, making it difficult to gain full control of it without gaining control over some fortified positions as well. We also see that Boyevlinka is the area where the Russians have advanced the most within the settlement, and that's because the proximity of the fortified positions are not within the outskirts of the settlement, but a few kilometers away, both in the eastern and western sides. The Russian advance within Boyevlinka was located with this footage here of Russian soldiers raising the flags here in the central parts of the settlement. So we see that the Russians have managed to advance and enter both Novokrenka, Boyevlinka, and Shakhtarsk, with varying amounts of success. But we do see that the Ukrainian positions are having a very difficult time holding the settlements, and the Russians are pressing onwards. Gaining control over these three settlements will allow the Russians to have a significant advantage. It isolates Velikinovasilka from Kurakhova, at least a direct connection between the two settlements, to allow the Russians to then push onwards towards Yasna Polina. Maximivka and Trudova in the direction of this road, gaining more control of it to move in the direction of Kurakhova, flanking the Ukrainian positions here in the river line area, as well as to facilitate the Russians, allowing them to launch offensive operations in the direction of Veliko Novosilka from two directions, both the northern and southern flank of the river line. So there's a lot of possibilities that opens up for the Russians if they can gain control over these three settlements. At the same time, the Russians bypass Katerinivka, the western part of it, to rush towards Yelisevitivka, where they've managed to reach the outskirts of it. This is due to the natural barrier that is the river line in between Katerinivka and Yelisevitivka. Based on it, the Ukrainians would be in a very difficult position right now and cut off completely from both settlements as the Russians have positions south of the river line overlooking the road out of Katerinivka and in the northern direction the road is physically cut off leaving the western outskirts of Katerinivka in an operational encirclement beginning the battle over the next settlement before they even close off Katerinivka. So we see that the Russians are speeding up offensive operations here in the north of Vodadar taking full advantage of the capture of the city and now the developments beyond it. Moving further north in the direction of Kurachivka, the Russians captured the remaining parts in the southern outskirts of Hernik, the industrial area, and are now moving towards Kurachivka from two directions, both along the cemetery area and along the railway area, moving through the residential area and the railways down towards Kurachivka. At the same time, they are the Ukrainian forces in these three settlements are being fired upon from three separate directions, the Russians from the south, east and north of the settlement, while the Russians are also fighting along the fortified positions to the west, too close of the gap. So far they are doing this slowly, trying to squeeze out the Ukrainian forces out of this remaining exit, while under heavy fire from every direction really at this point. 
So the Ukrainians here are in a very difficult position and the units are being pressured from multiple directions. Further north, the Russians west of Slidovia following the capture of the city managed to capture Vishneva as well. The settlements just west of Slidovia allows the Russians to advance further along the railways both towards Ryorivka and Petrivka, which are isolated from the village chain to the south and has the river line to the north. It's likely the Russians will combine that with an assault from the E-50 highway in the northern parts, cutting off the road there and pushing them towards the western parts along the railway lines. At the same time, there's going to be a battle over the villages in the western direction, where the Russians are slowly advancing along the road towards Novo Oleksivka. The Russians have here managed to expand the center of control west of Seredova as they continue offensive operations. The clearing is still taking place in Seredova once that is done, they will start preparing Seredova to be a springboard for offensive operations, after which we will see further offensive operations by the Russians in a northwestern, western and northern direction from the settlement. Further north in direction of Toretsk, we see here that the Ukrainians have recaptured a significant portion of the southern districts, gaining full control of it. Three sets of geolocated footage, first in the center, then in the southern outskirts, now in the northeastern outskirts of the districts, allowed the Ukrainians to slowly capture building after building, going through it, storming the different buildings and regaining full control of it as the Russians continued to withdraw and fire FPV drones and artillery on the Ukrainian positions. The Ukrainian unit doing this fighting is the 1st Mechanized Battalion of the 42nd Mechanized Brigade. This unit does not have a lot of Western equipment, but they do have the Striker Armored Personnel Carrier and the Max Pro MRAPs. So we see that they have some level of Western equipment, mostly just to transport troops to the front line. Their main objective is to storm different objectives. So their objective here is simply to go all out, recapture this, this district in between Turetsk and Leonidivka, to create a bulge and wedge in the Russian connection between the two sides. This will allow the Ukrainians to attack each of them separately, one by one. They'll be able to counterattack either in the region of Leonidivka, Sherbinivka, to cut off the Russian thrust into the Ukrainian defenses, or they'll be able to concentrate their forces in the Turetsk direction itself to recapture some territory within the city. In either case, the wedge that they have built for themselves pushed through. Is also in a vulnerable position because if the Russians manage to capture Serebrenivka, they'll be able to flank the Ukrainian position combine, combined with if they manage to capture the industrial area and the apartment complex area in the central parts of the city, they'll be able to flank from the east. And with heavy artillery fire and drone fire on these positions, their numbers would dwindle fairly quickly, especially now that the Russians have been present within it which earlier geolocated footage confirmed them here in the western outskirts of the district. And that is the exact date where the 1st Mechanized Battalion of the 4th Second Mechanized Brigade arrived. This shows clearly that this Mechanized Battalion, its only objective was to push the Russians away. And they arrived to do exactly that and have done exactly that, which raises the question, what is next? The Ukrainians... Although I've said many times near collapse and so on, it's not because they do not have combat capable units, combat ready units, and a lot of them. It is instead that they do not have enough of them. They have sent one of these mechanized battalions that allowed them to recapture some territory, and this is something they beforehand did regularly. But if we take a look at all of the territorial changes, they have not been able to do it regularly this month, need nor last month. No, the previous month they did the Kursk incursion, but we saw the consequences of that in the Pokrovsk region. So we see that there's a lot of changes that have happened due to the recent changes, but it does not change that the Ukrainian forces, when they have enough, when they are properly equipped, when they are sent to do a mission that is reasonable, they're able to succeed at that. Moving on to the Kopyansk direction, the Russians have managed to advance both within Kruhlyakivka, capturing some forest patches, gaining a foothold within the forest patches here near Sinkova, and gaining full physical control over the road here in between Kruhlyakivka and Sinkova. They also signed to move in the direction of Shahrisova, which is a more open settlement. It's not a lot of buildings, it's more separate. It's similar to Sinkivka in the sort of buildings available 
and the layout of the settlement. And the Russians are also advancing in the northern direction towards Kosinikivka, crossing the river line, Pashani river line, and moving into the residential area. Both of these advances were geolocated with the following footage. We see that the Russians are fighting over the fortified positions of the Ukrainians and have secured the supply route in and out, while at the same time slowly moving through the residential area to gain control over the settlements along the Uska river line. The Ukrainians have a lot of fortified positions here in the direction of Kupiant, where it seems that the Russian objective right now is to move along the Uskut river line, avoiding as many of them as possible, as they simply avoid them by well, moving along the river line instead of forcing their positions head on. With the foothold in Petropavlivka, the Russians can move along the fields towards Petrovka and the eastern parts of Kupiansk, while at the same time with their foothold across the Pishene river line in the south, they can move along the first patches, the railways and the settlements in the northern direction towards Kupiansk as well. This will avoid the majority of the fortified positions of the Ukrainians near Petropavlivka, the second Pishene and Stupovo Novoselivka, where the entire area between them is filled with fortified positions. So heavy fighting continues here in the Kupiansk direction. There is no indication that the battle will end anytime soon. Instead, we will see more incremental gains and slow and steady advances by the Russians as they continue offensive operations in this direction. The main efforts of the Russians is naturally directed in the direction of Kurohove. Following that, they will start the battle over Bokrovsk. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out my Patreon and YouTube membership if you want to support me and gain access to additional content. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.